All right, here we go. Question number 17 from our college algebra homework number five in my lab math. They want us to solve and we have a rational inequality. So I've written that down over here. Let's get started. How do we work this out? Well, it turns out that for a rational inequality, both the numerator and the denominator will produce critical points as long as they both have a variable. And so these both have variables, so we're going to set the numerator equal to zero, and we're going to set the denominator equal to zero, and we're going to solve and get our critical points. So dividing both sides by seven, the first critical point, x is zero, moving the eight over gives me x is negative eight, and those are our two critical points. So the next step is to go to the number line. I need to plot those points at negative 8 and 0. And then I need to determine if they're going to have open circles or solid dots. So <clears throat> for the numerator critical point, the critical point that came from the numerator, the uh, whether it's open or solid depends on the inequality. So since this is greater than or equal to, that means that he's going to be a solid dot. The critical point that comes from the denominator is always an open circle. It can never be solid. And here's why. If we were to allow that value... If I plug it in for x, that would make the denominator 0, which is not allowed. And so that means that negative 8 cannot be included. So that's why he's always an open circle. And then we're going to need test points in each region to see which regions are shaded. Okay, so I need a p test point less than negative 8, let's say negative 10. I need a number between negative 8 and 0, let's say negative 4, and then a number bigger than 0, again you can pick anything, I'm going to go big, negative, uh, positive 10, and then the next step is we're going to take those test points, we're going to plug them back into the inequality, replacing each x with each test point to see if we get a true or a false statement. So here we go, negative 10 first. That's going to be 7 times negative 10 over negative 10 plus 8. And we want to know, is that greater than or equal to 0? Okay. So the numerator, that's going to be negative 70 over negative 10 plus 8 is negative 2. A negative over a negative makes a positive. And a positive number is definitely greater than or equal to zero, so that is true. And so the negative 10 is true, which means we're going to shade that region. And then if you remember, I said previously in another video that these test points usually all alternate true and false. So I'm going to go ahead and assume this is false and this is true because they usually alternate. But you really should test those just to make sure, okay, which I'm going to do. So next, negative 4, that's going to be 7 times negative 4 over negative 4 plus 8. And we want to know, is that greater than or equal to 0? 4 times 7, that's going to be negative 28. Negative 4 plus 8 is positive 4. Negative divided by a positive ends up negative and a negative number is definitely not greater than or equal to zero. That is false, which is what I said. All right, and then the 10, checking the 10, 7 times 10 over 10 plus 8. That's going to give me 70 over 18. And that's definitely a positive number, which is definitely greater than or equal to zero. And so that... 10 gives me a true statement, and so we need to shade that piece. 
All right, so now that I have the number line shaded completely, I can now go through reading from left to right and get the interval notation for the solution set. So that's going to be everything from negative infinity up to negative 8. The negative 8 had an open circle, so that's a parenthesis. And then the union symbol, remember the U is the glue that sticks the two pieces together. So picking back up at zero, remember the zero had a solid dot, so that's why he gets a bracket shaded to infinity. And so there's our solution in interval notation. Let's see if we're right. Here we go. Negative infinity, comma, negative eight, with a parenthesis, and then the union, and a bracket. Now the bracket comes from the keyboard, 0 to infinity, and there you go. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below, or you can text me, and thanks for watching.